I'm going to show you the steps required to connect to a Cisco router. Normally Cisco routers use a, a serial roll cable to connect to the console port. Now, this cable um, I have right here, it's this nice light blue cable. And in order to connect to my router, I have this serial uh, adapter because I don't have a serial port on my computer. I have to have a USB to serial adapter. Then it connects to the Cisco serial cable that then plugs into the console port on the device. And the console port is right here. The one says console and you can tell we got it. It's console. So you plug it directly in there. And then once you have that taken care of, you are physically wired up and ready to go. Assuming you have all of your configurations for your USB to serial adapter taken care of, um, you're ready to go. And then I have this tool called Putty. You can download Putty on the internet pretty easily. So I'm going to go ahead and launch Putty. When Putty is up, you need to switch to serial mode. And I'm using COM3 instead of COM1 um, because that's what my USB to serial adapter wants me to use is COM3. And you can usually find that in your device manager. And then I just open up my session. When I have my session open, uh, my router is currently off so I can turn on my router. And as soon as I turn on the router, you can start seeing the boot process. The router first goes through its initial um, power on self test and it checks everything. Then it loads a preliminary version of the iOS operating system. So it uses an operating system called iOS for the internet operating system. And it loads the first version. And from that first bootstrap version, it then loads the actual operating system you're going to be booting. So um, you can see up here, it says it's 12.2. That is the bootstrap version. When it boots up, it's actually going to be loading a 12.3 version of the iOS. You can see it's decompressing the image right here, and this is a good sign. This takes a few minutes, so let's just skip ahead. After the image has been decompressed, it needs to then load everything. Usually, depending on the uh, configuration register, it will decide whether or not it's going to load your um, previous save configurations or not. I don't have any previous save configurations, and so it drops me to this thing where it asks me if I want to enter into the initial configuration dialog. Normally, people just say no, and you can just go ahead and start. Um, once you have taken care of that, it usually goes and checks interfaces, it makes sure they're up or down, and then it drops you to this prompt right here, this first prompt where it says router, and then a greater than sign is the regular user prompt. Uh, the router right here, the word router, is the host name of the machine. So let's go ahead and switch into a privileged mode. You can type in enable to switch into privileged mode. If you have a password, it will prompt, prompt you for a password before continuing on. And then in privileged mode, I can go into configuration mode. So I type in configure terminal to get into configuration mode. And from there, I can change the host name with the host name command. Type in host name, and let's call this router um, Cisco router, because that's a little bit different. You'll see that instantly the host name portion changes. You can see I'm still in the configuration mode. Uh, from here, I can go into interface modes, into routing modes, and other modes. Um, I can also leave this by typing in either exit or end. End will take me all the way back to privilege mode. Exit will take me back to the previous mode, which in this case would be the same thing as privilege mode. And that's how you get into a Cisco router and start communicating with the Cisco router.